Good morning. Today's quote is by Charles Colton. The study of mathematics, the study of mathematics, like the Nile, begins in minuteness but ends in magnificence. Today's word is eerie, strange and frightening. The similarities were eerie. Another use of this word is the empty house had an eerie feel. Today's topic uh, is an important one, vectors. Uh, you had done uh, some part of vectors uh, in physics in 11th standard. Yes. Okay, so let us start. Uh, in physics and other related branches of science, uh, we come across two types of quantities. One having both magnitude as well as direction and the other having magnitude only. A physical quantity which is determined by its magnitude and direction is called a vector and a physical quantity which is determined by its magnitude only is called scalar. So what are the examples of scalar? There can be uh, many examples like mass, volume, temperature, density, etc. So these are scalars. As I said, a quantity, physical quantity, which requires both magnitude as well as direction for its complete description is called as a vector. Now, what are the examples of vector? You can say acceleration, displacement, velocity, force, etc. So these are vectors. Now, next part is how to represent a vector. Basically, a vector is represented by a directed line segment. This is point A, this is point B. Okay, a vector is represented by a directed line segment. The vector shown in the figure is denoted by AB bar or you can use an arrow above AB, right? But we will simply write AB bar, that's it. A is called initial point and B is called the terminal point of the vector. Now, what about magnitude of this vector? The length of the line segment AB represents the magnitude of the vector and the direction from A towards B indicated by an arrowhead shows the direction of the vector. The magnitude of a vector is called the modulus of the vector. And what is uh, how to represent modulus of this vector? It is denoted by mod of AB bar, okay? Actually, vectors are usually represented by A bar, B bar, C bar. So I can say that uh, this A, B bar is a uh, small A bar or for that matter, small C bar. So what is the magnitude then? It is mod of C bar that is just small C. Now, next part is different types of vectors. The first one is zero vector. A vector whose magnitude is zero is called the zero vector, which is also called as null vector. It has no uh, specific direction and it is denoted by zero bar. Now, why do we need zero vector? Uh, suppose we are interested in finding A bar minus A bar, right? So what will be the result? Will you say it is zero? This is not correct because a vector cannot be uh, equal to a scalar. So it has to be zero bar, okay? And that is why zero vector. Then an important definition of unit vector. What is unit vector? A vector of magnitude unity, that is one, is called as unit vector. The unit vector in the direction of given vector, this is important. The unit vector in the direction of given vector of A bar is denoted by A cap. So A cap is unit vector, which is in the direction of vector A bar. Magnitude of A cap is nothing but one. Now, when can we say that two vectors are equal? Suppose these are the two vectors. 
not drawn to the scale. So these two vectors, say this is A bar and this is B bar, are said to be equal if two conditions are satisfied. Number one, their directions are the same. And secondly, and secondly, mod of A bar is mod of B bar, that is A equal to B. So in that case, we say that two vectors are equal and we write A bar equal to B bar, okay? Now, if A bar, rather if mod of A bar equal to mod of B bar, we cannot conclude that vectors are equal. This only means that their magnitudes are the same. This is necessary, but not sufficient condition. Their directions must be the same. Then only we can say that they are equal vectors. Then what is negative of a vector? Suppose A bar is a vector. A bar is a vector then a vector whose magnitude is the same as that of A bar and which is in the direction opposite to that of A bar is called negative of A bar and is denoted by minus A bar. Uh, some students say vector which has different direction. See, opposite is different, true, but every different need not be opposite. So you have to say opposite direction, okay? So uh, what will be the negative of vector a b bar can i say negative of vector a b bar is b a bar yes so b a bar is a vector which is negative of the vector a b bar clearly both the vectors have the same magnitude right now next definition is important collinear vectors what are collinear vectors two or more vectors are said to be collinear if they are parallel to each other. So in short, parallel vectors are collinear vectors. So these vectors, this is A bar and this is B bar. These vectors are parallel. So they are collinear vectors. The vector A bar and vector B bar in this case, they are also parallel and therefore they are collinear vectors. Now, like parallel vectors and unlike parallel vectors. This logic is simple. Two or more vectors having same direction are called like parallel vectors. Two vectors are said to be unlike parallel vectors if they are directed in opposite directions, okay? Now, coplanar vectors. See, two vectors are always coplanar. The question arises in case of three or more vectors. So how coplanar vectors are defined? A set of three or more vectors which lie in the same plane or in parallel planes are called coplanar vectors or the vectors which are parallel to the same plane are coplanar vectors. If the vectors are not coplanar, they are called as non-coplanar vectors. Then you can have uh, another types uh, like free vectors, localized vectors. Then uh, I think there is one more. Uh, we can say, mm, yes, co-initial and co-terminus vectors. I'll tell you about them also. A vector which can be shifted along the line of action or parallel to itself and whose initial point can be chosen anywhere is called a free vector, right? So this is the definition of free vector. Localized vector, a vector which can be shifted only along its line of action is called a localized vector. Uh, can you give me an example of that? Uh, can I say force acting on a body is a localized vector? Yes, I can. Then co-initial and co-terminus vector, vectors having the same initial point are called co-initial vectors and vectors having the same terminal point are called coterminous vectors, okay? So these are the definitions. See, uh, today we'll be discussing theory part only for most of the time, but I think this is a simple part and you have already done that uh, in physics. Then comes algebra of vectors. We begin with scalar multiplication. See, in vectors, usually A bar, B bar, C bar are used to denote vectors 
and therefore you will notice that x y z real numbers are taken as real numbers and call, are called as scalars so let a bar be a vector and m small m a bar is a vector and small m is a real number which is called as scalar then m a bar please do not put dot in between m and a bar you have to be very careful because a uh, dot usually stands for dot product and dot product uh, which you have already done uh, is in between two vectors and not one constant and one vector so constantly you have to remember this do not put dot between m and a bar so m a bar is a vector which is a scalar multiple of a bar now i have just said m is a scalar means it is a real number so there are three cases regarding m the first one is m is greater than 0 that is positive so in that case m a bar will have the same direction as that of a bar and what will be the magnitude of m a bar it is simply m a see i know that m is positive i have considered that case only right otherwise i will have to say mod of m a because magnitude of vector a bar is a and not sure about sin of m so mod m but we are considering three different cases second m less than 0 so in this case m a bar has direction which is opposite to that of a bar okay and what is the magnitude of this vector then it is minus m a because if m is negative less than 0 is negative then minus m is positive and third case third possibility about a real number that m equal to 0 so in that case m a bar is nothing but a zero vector okay basically what is minus a bar can i write minus a bar as minus 1 a bar yes i can right so minus 1 a bar is a scalar multiple of a bar which is in the direction opposite to that of a bar and what is the magnitude what is the magnitude of minus a bar it is nothing but e i hope this is clear to you okay now there are some properties which are obvious uh, regarding the scalars like uh, if m is a scalar then m a bar plus b bar is m a bar okay plus m b bar if you are given m a bar plus m b bar you can write it as m in bracket a bar plus b bar okay yes now we have defined uh, that unit vector i have told you that unit vector in the direction of a bar is denoted by a cap and what is the definition of uh, rather what is the definition of unit vector a vector whose magnitude is 1 and therefore a cap can be written as a bar upon mod of a bar or just a note that right hand side is a scalar multiple because one upon mod of a bar is a real number scalar so one upon mod of a bar a bar so it is a scalar multiple of a bar is that clear now the next part which i'm going to tell you is very 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 important let me tell you the statement if two vectors are collinear if two vectors non zero vectors uh, are collinear one can be expressed as a scalar multiple of other i'll explain this is a bar and this is b bar these are parallel vectors so they are collinear if this is so then one vector can be expressed as a scalar multiple now i will not say non zero non zero every time because a bar b bar uh, i have taken as non zero vectors only so here i can say uh, a bar is minus 2b bar why minus because they have opposite directions right similarly i can say b bar is minus half a bar so if two non zero vectors are collinear then one can be expressed as a scalar multiple of other and conversely means what if i get 
if i get a bar equal to 11 b bar i can conclude that a bar and b bar are definitely collinear vectors see this is 11 and not sign for parallel okay i'll change this uh, i'll say 113 b bar okay see these are the vectors uh, suppose this is a bar and this is b bar can you express one vector in terms of other not possible why because these are not collinear okay now the next part is addition of two vectors so you will tell me about them yes uh, the first law is triangle law uh, let a bar and b bar be two non zero vectors represent the vector a bar by o a bar at a represent the vector b bar by a b bar then the vector o b bar is said to represent the sum of the vectors a bar and b bar if o b bar i take as c bar then we can write c bar equal to a bar plus b bar okay so c bar is called as sum or resultant of the vectors a bar and b bar this is called as triangle law of addition of vectors but you have to note that magnitude of c bar is not equal to sum of the magnitudes of a bar and b bar use common sense in any triangle sum of the lengths of any two sides is always greater than length of the third side so please don't say c equal to a plus b no you can say that mod of c bar equal to mod of a bar plus b bar but i haven't told you that mod of a bar plus b bar is mod of a bar plus mod of b bar in this case okay so you should know this then comes parallelogram law of addition of vectors listen to me carefully let a bar and b bar be two non zero vectors represent the vectors a bar and b bar by oa bar and ob bar respectively complete the parallelogram oacb i repeat complete the parallelogram oacb then what is ac bar ac bar is nothing but ob bar so can i say actually i will write that oa bar okay plus ob bar oa bar plus ob bar is oa bar plus ac bar is this correct yes the vectors along opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal why because they are not only parallel but have the same magnitude and in the same direction that is also important i am not saying ob bar is same as ca bar no i am saying ob bar is equal to ac bar now it is oa bar plus ac bar by a triangle law of addition of vectors it is nothing but oc bar suppose i represent oc bar by c bar then what is c bar it is a bar plus b bar so how can we uh, say or state parallelogram law of addition of vectors the sum of the two vectors oa bar and ob bar is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram through o of which oa and ob are adjacent sides okay now you should know these properties of addition of vectors the first one is the vector addition is commutative means what a bar plus b bar same as b bar plus a bar okay so this is nothing but commutative law of addition of vectors the vector addition is associative means what a bar plus b bar first we find resultant of a bar and b bar a bar plus b bar rather plus c bar is the same as a bar plus b bar plus c bar this is called as associative law and therefore can i can i say that this is just a bar plus b bar plus c bar yes i can okay now can i say that a bar plus zero bar equal to zero bar plus a bar equal to a bar yes obviously 
and therefore zero vector can be called as additive identity for vector addition now what is the addition of uh, a vector and its negative a bar plus minus 1 a bar is nothing but zero bar okay so this is about the addition of vectors in fact uh, we can have polygonal law of vectors also uh, i think uh, i have given that in that pdf file uh, yesterday i couldn't upload that today uh, i'll upload the same file what can you say about subtraction basically what is a minus b a minus b is nothing but a plus minus b right so subtraction of two vectors uh, if you want i'll explain that see let me draw the diagram this is a bar i consider this as b bar in fact this two should be the same this is extended part this is a bar minus b bar and this is a bar plus b bar. okay right so b bar in this direction so this will be what minus b bar good so we are discussing subtraction of two vectors if a bar and b bar are two vectors then a bar minus b bar is nothing but a bar plus minus b bar okay where minus b bar is the negative vector of b bar now represent the vector a bar by o a bar at a represent the vector b bar by a b bar represent a vector ac bar so that its magnitude is same as ab bar but the direction is opposite to that of it so we extend ba to c we have to see that length ba is same as length ac so i can say that ab bar is b bar so ac bar is minus b bar okay then the vector oc bar in this case is said to represent the difference of the vectors a bar and b bar we can write what is oc bar oc bar is nothing but oa bar plus ac bar reason triangle law but oa bar is a bar and ac bar is what minus b bar and therefore i can say oc bar is nothing but e bar minus e bar is that clear so this is about subtraction of vectors uh actually after this there are two simple theorems regarding the collinearity of vectors okay and uh, then concept of coplanar vectors and not only that in this part we are going to discuss another important concept linear combination of vectors can you tell me about that linear combination uh, now we uh, discuss coplanar vectors and then linear combination of vectors now what are coplanar vectors a set of vectors which lie in the same plane or in parallel planes are called coplanar vectors the vectors which are not coplanar will be called as non coplanar vectors see the question or problem arises in case of three or more vectors because two vectors are always coplanar they do form a plane okay now important concept of linear combination of vectors let a bar and b bar be two vectors and x and y be any real numbers remember usually we consider x and y as variables and a and b as constants scalars a b we call as arbitrary constants but in vectors we consider a bar b bar as vectors so if i consider a and b they will be magnitudes of a bar and b bar 
and therefore in vector algebra x y z u v w are considered as the scalars so let a bar and b bar be two vectors and x and y be any real numbers then the vector x a bar plus y b bar now x can be equal to y we we do not know about that but they can be equal so x a bar plus y b bar is called linear combination of the vectors a bar and b bar i can give number of examples minus a bar plus 1 upon 13 b bar this is linear combination now we can extend this idea to more than two vectors in fact so x a bar plus y b bar plus z c bar is linear combination of which vectors a bar b bar c bar where x y z are real numbers or i can say plus u d bar this is linear combination of four vectors a bar b bar c bar and d bar okay now we are going to discuss two important theorems i'll tell you the statement twice the first theorem if a bar and b bar are any two non zero non collinear vectors lying in the same plane of course then prove that any vector r bar coplanar with them can be expressed uniquely as the linear combination r bar equal to p1 a bar plus p2 b bar uh i'll tell you the statement once again see if a bar b bar are any two non zero non collinear vectors then any vector r bar coplanar with them can be uniquely expressed this word word is important can be uniquely expressed as the linear combination r bar equal to p1 a bar plus t2 b bar uh let me explain see a bar b bar r bar are coplanar why because the theorem says a bar b bar are any two non zero non collinear vectors any vector r bar coplanar with them so i can say that a bar b bar r bar are coplanar now take any point o in the plane let me draw the diagram first so this is any point o in the plane okay these are the vectors and i'm considering this parallelogram so you have to concentrate okay take any point o in the plane of a bar b bar and r bar represent the vectors a bar b bar r bar by o a bar o b bar and o r bar okay take the point p on a bar and q on b bar such that o p r q is a parallelogram now o p bar and o a bar are collinear vectors see this this wording is important we have already said that if two vectors are collinear one can be expressed as a non zero scalar multiple of other we can say that a bar is 3 times b bar or if they have opposite directions then minus 3 okay so i can say that op bar op bar is nothing but t1 a bar now you may ask me sir why t1 see scalars need not be represented by x y z you can say that lambda 1 is a scalar possible you can say that alpha 1 is a scalar in the theorem they have used t1 t2 that is why we are taking t1 t2 don't think like think like t is parameter and all that no it is just a constant so from this a bar that is o a bar and o p bar are collinear vectors so o p bar can be expressed 
as scalar multiple of a bar similarly oq bar and ob bar are collinear vectors so can i say that oq bar <clears throat> is t2b bar yes i can now by parallelogram law of addition of vectors r bar is op bar plus oq bar that is nothing but t1a bar plus t2b bar so we have proved the first part that if a bar b bar are two non zero non collinear vectors then any vector r bar in the same plane can be expressed as the linear combination but we have to prove uniqueness also because the word uniquely is used so let us prove the uniqueness we have to prove that this representation is unique on the contrary we assume that this representation is not unique means what this is also possible that r1 rather r bar is t1 dash a bar plus t2 dash b bar for different values of t1 and t2 right so that i can equate right hand sides so t1 a bar plus t2 b bar equal to t1 dash a bar plus t2 dash b bar now we are in the terms so t1 minus t1 dash a bar i hope you are getting this i am shifting terms in a bar to lhs and terms in b bar to rhs or t2 dash minus t2 b bar now we have said that this representation is not unique see the cursor so this part is not zero because if this is zero means they are equal means representation is unique we have begun with it is true that we have to prove that it is unique but on the contrary we are using contradiction that it is not unique so divide so what is a bar minus or it is plus t2 dash minus a t2 upon what t1 minus t1 dash now this is interesting here a bar and b bar are expressed rather a bar is expressed as non zero scalar multiple of b bar this means a bar and b bar are collinear vectors but no a bar and b bar are non collinear right and therefore our assumption that representation is not unique is wrong representation must be unique is that clear okay i'll repeat this part once again what was the uh, statement if a bar and b bar are two non zero non collinear vectors then any vector r bar in the plane can be uniquely expressed as the linear combination the first part is simple we uh, showed that yes r bar can be expressed as linear combination but we have to prove that this representation is unique so we use contradiction that representation is not unique means another uh, scalars are possible t1 not t1 dash t2 not t2 dash but r bar is t1 dash a bar plus t2 dash b bar now right hand sides can be equated as left hand side is r bar re are in the terms i can divide by this because they are not equal so difference is not zero here a bar is expressed as scalar multiple non zero scalar multiple of b bar this is possible only if two vectors are collinear but a bar and b bar are non collinear so our assumption that a bar and rather our assumption that representation is not unique is wrong representation is unique okay yes in fact from this theorem can we conclude that if a bar b bar c bar are coplanar see this is very important we are going to use this at least 100 times the observation if a bar b bar c bar are coplanar then any one of them can be expressed as linear combination of remaining two 
I will consider particular case. So you will appreciate that. Suppose R bar is a bar plus three B bar. Okay. So R bar is expressed as linear combination of a bar and B bar. From this, what is a bar? It is R bar minus three B bar. And what is B bar? B bar is nothing but one upon three R bar minus one upon three A bar. So the conclusion is, if A bar, B bar, R bar, or in general any three vectors are coplanar, any one of them, any one of them can be expressed as linear combination of remaining two. So in some cases you are asked to prove the coplanarity of three vectors. So how to prove that three vectors are coplanar? Just prove that any one of them can be expressed as linear combination of remaining two. I hope this is clear to you. Uh, let us solve few sums. Exercise 5.1. The vector A bar is directed due north and mod of A bar equal to 24. The vector B bar is directed due west and mod of B bar equal to 7. Find mod of resultant of the vector that is mod of A bar plus B bar. Uh, let AB bar equal to A bar, BC bar equal to B bar. Then by triangle law, what is AC bar, A bar plus B bar. Now we are given magnitude of A bar that is A, 24. That is length AB is 24. Similarly, length BC that is mod of B bar equal to 7. Now triangle uh, is right angled at uh, B. So by Pythagoras theorem, what is AC square? AB square plus BC square comes out to be uh, 625. So AC, that is mod of AC bar is 25, but mod of AC bar is mod of A bar plus B bar. Okay, so this is the answer. I'm sorry. Second, in the triangle PQR, PQ bar is 2A bar, QR bar is 2B bar. The midpoint of PR is M. Find the following vectors in terms of A bar and B bar. We are asked to find PR bar, PM bar, QM bar. See, this is given. Okay. Now, what is PR bar by triangle of addition of vectors? PQ bar plus QR bar. Both are given. So, just substitute. So, 2A bar plus 2B bar. Now, M is midpoint of PR. Okay. So, what is PM bar? It is half PR bar, that is half 2A bar plus 2B bar. Please do not put dot here. So that is A bar plus B bar. Okay. Now what is QM bar? QM bar is nothing but QR bar plus RM bar. But QR bar is 2 bar. What is RM bar? See the cursor. RM bar is minus MR bar. But note that. PM bar is same as MR bar as M is midpoint of PR. And we have already obtained PM bar, A bar plus B bar. So just substitute to get finally QM bar as B bar minus A bar. Right now. Now try sum number three. O, A, B, C, D is a regular hexagon. The points A and B have position vectors A bar and B bar respectively, referred to the origin O. Find in terms of A bar and B bar, the position vectors of C, D and E. Try. Third one, O, A, B, C, D is a regular hexagon. The points A and B have position vectors A bar and B bar respectively, uh, referred to the origin O. Find in terms of A bar and B bar, the position vectors of C, D and E. Okay, what is given? We are given that O A bar is A bar, O B bar is B bar. Uh, suppose uh, A, D, B and O, C meet at M. So clearly M bisects A, D, B and O, C. So what is AB bar? 
ए बी बार इज नथिंग बट ए बार प्लस ओ बी बार ट्रैंगल लॉ बट ए बार इज माइनस ओ ए बार सो माइनस ए बार प्लस बी बार विच इज सेम एज बी बार माइनस ए बार वोट इज ओ एम बार ओ एम बार इज नथिंग बट ए बी बार वाय बिकॉज क्वाड्रिलेटरल ओ ए बी एम इज अ पैरलोग्राम नाउ वेक्टर्स अलॉन्ग द अपोजिट साइड ऑफ अ पैरलोग्राम आर इक्वल वेक्टर्स राइट of course don't say om bar is same as b bar om bar is same as ab bar so it is b bar minus a bar what is oc bar twice om bar right so it is nothing but 2b bar minus 2a bar now what is od bar od bar is nothing but oc bar plus cd bar that is oc bar minus dc bar But what is DC bar? DC bar is nothing but OA bar, and therefore OD bar is OC bar, which is already uh, obtained to be bar minus two A bar minus A bar. So OD bar comes out to be two B bar minus three A bar. Finally, what is OE bar? OE bar is nothing but OM bar plus AM bar. Now OM bar is B bar minus A bar. It is obtained. What is AM bar? AM bar is AO bar. I have not written that step, but AO bar is minus OA bar. Why to write minus OA bar? Because we know OA bar it is A bar. So this is B bar minus A bar minus A bar. That is B bar minus two A bar. So what is the final answer? Position vectors of C, D, and E are two B bar minus two A bar, two B bar minus three A bar, and B bar minus two A bar respectively. So. That's it for today.